Hi hi, it's Datachi. And about a year ago now, god, time flies, I made my first real video that, you know, wasn't a shitpost. I drew a bunch of funky little Pokemon fusions, ranging from some pretty interesting designs to freaks of nature that should be shot down on sight. Although, in the time since that video was originally released, I think I've grown quite a lot as an artist. So let's put that to the test, with a return to drawing the craziest Pokemon fusions. To start with, we've got the hand monkey and the mouth lady. All we need is a foot and we've got a diagnosable disorder on our hands. Foot and mouth. I started out by sketching out different ideas, working out their anatomy which was a little experimental. I tried Apom with a more circular version of Mawile's jaw at one point, but eventually settled in Mawile's regular jaw on the tail of Apom. I also experimented with different types of hair for Apom to reflect another element of Mawile's design as well as different face shapes. Eventually, I found the pose I would use for the final sketch, and after settling on an arm shape, would give this guy a sort of gremlin -y pose, looking over his shoulder like he pulled some sort of prank. Then came line art, where I made the last minute decision to change the hair to the parted style to better reflect more. Otherwise, colouring was quite smooth, Taking the darker colour scheme of Mawile, using the yellow as a sort of neutral skin tone, and the black in place of Apom's purple. Finally, we're on to rendering, generally having the light source on the left with shadow across the drawing as a whole, and rendering some shine in the eyes, leaving us with... Uh... Man, I should really be coming up with names for these fusions. Uh... More... Pom. Anyway, what's next? Well, this is a weird one. I started off with a body shape based heavily on Galvantula, adding elements of shaman throughout. You know, adding a puppy-like face to the body and legs ending in paws, then replacing fur across the body with leaves and foliage. I also made efforts to add some smaller body parts, ears, compound eyes, the whole deal. I also also experimented with placement of shaman's flower, but would decide to just keep it on one side for simplicity. Time for line art. I've been trying to use vector layers to do thick lines on the outside and some thinner on the inside, generally to make the image pop more. During this portion, I also make sure to keep an eye out for any minor details I may have missed till now, bringing in Shaman's green and white colour scheme as well as the pink from the flower. I also end up choosing a slightly darker green for the eyes to differentiate them a bit. Finally, we move on to shading, where I end up separating it into two layers to give just a bit more depth to the bushy thorax on our buggy boy, alongside some other details. And thus, we reach the end product. Man, I need to come up with a name again. Uh. How about... Galvin? Sounds like a kid who'd get bullied in school. Well, that's his responsibility. On to the final fusion! Uh, is it gonna transition, or...? Ah! For this last fusion, the basic idea was to turn Alteria into this raging storm cloud of lightning and thunder, and as such, I immediately went with a more dynamic pose. I really like the idea of the head racing forwards in this twisting motion, almost like turning mid-flight. I had to make quite a few alterations to proportions and anatomy before I was happy with it, and added more complex details like wings, lightning bolt shaped hair on his head, and the cloud itself. Eventually, after some minor details on the eyes being finalised, I was able to start on line art. Bigger on the outside, thinner on the inside, you know the deal by now. 
What was far more interesting this time around was the colouring and shading. Originally, I was going to make the head a dark black, but ended up going for yellow with how darkly coloured the Stormcloud boots have become. After that, I had the fun task of giving this boyo some depth. Acting with a light source from the left and Shingling trying to portray the distance of certain body parts, like his right wing or the different sections of his tail, finally leading us to the end product. So, what exactly did we learn here? Well, not to toot my own horn, but I think I've improved a shit ton since my first proper video. The fusion designs look a lot more fully realised. Being in a position of making cool stuff for a year has really made me appreciate the work that goes into more complicated artwork and video editing. But honestly, I'd say it's fully worth it. Only makes me want to keep on going, make weirder stuff and get to meet weirder people. So. Thanks to all of you who've been watching and made it possible. So here's to another year of making stuff, and to the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.